Hello YouTube, it's Anders here on Watch On Channel. Today I'm finally back with the full review of one of the very cool new dive watches from Seiko here in 2020. So this is a watch I did an unboxing first impressions video about a couple of weeks ago. You can find the link to that video down in the description or up in the right hand corner if you want to see the unboxing and my first impressions of this watch. It comes in this kind of faux leather box and it's really nice compared to a lot of those cheap cardboard boxes you get Seiko watches in today. So inside you find the warranty and the manual, not very interesting. And this is of course one of the new King Turtles. So Seiko released three new versions of the Turtle, which is a highly upgraded version of the Turtle, a black, a green and a blue. And uh, one of them on a bracelet. And I opted for the blue one on the silicon rubber strap. And here you can see the reference number SRPE07K1. It has the movement caliber of 4R36. This is kind of the retail price. I paid less than this and I actually see it on Amazon and on eBay for around 450 to 600 US dollars. So look around if you're interested in this watch. So what really attracted me to this watch was definitely the blue way pattern dial, as you can see here. It's an absolutely stunning dial. I think Seiko did a really, really nice job with this dial. And I've been wearing this during the weekends mostly because it's definitely not an, an office watch and I work in an office. So this is kind of a weekend watch for me or a summer or spring watch going to the beach or hiking or just taking a nice walk during the hot summer nights then this watch really comes into its own because this beautiful dial, as you can see with the sunburst blue and wave pattern dial style, definitely is a summer style. So having a look at the dimensions, this is of course a bigger watch, but it does both wear bigger and smaller than you would think. So 45 millimeters in diameter, approximately 12 and a half, 13 millimeters in thickness, lock width of 22, only approximately 47.7 or 48 millimeters from lock tip to lock tip. And you also notice that the locks have drilled lock holes, so it's very, very easy to change between straps. I did a video very recently trying on these military elastic straps from Cullinan, and uh, I tried them on this watch, and it was very, very easy to remove this silicone rubber strap, but I really like it. So it wears big, it is kind of a thicker watch, but because of the lock to lock distance of only approximately 48 millimeters, which is really testament to the cushion shape of the case, which is very, very 70s styled, it actually wears a little bit smaller than a 45 millimeter watch. That was my biggest concern buying this watch. Of course, the big star of this watch is the dial. So having a close up on the dial, you can see this beautiful wave pattern. You get applied kind of cream colored hour markings with special hour markings at 12 o'clock, thicker up there, down here a little bit thicker at six o'clock and at nine o'clock as well. So you can easily see if it's six, nine or 12. And then you get this big fat applied loom also to the hands, which are these kind of syringe style hands, which are really, really cool. A really cool detail is the counterbalance on the second hand, because that's actually the fin of a shark, which is really, really cool in my opinion. Seiko at 12 o'clock, the X for prospects, automatic divers 200 meters of water resistance above six o'clock. And you get this kind of baguette style cyclops at three o'clock with the day date complication. I actually like this. I'm not a big fan of the day date complication, but because this watch is kind of reminiscent of a 1970s watch, I actually think it's really befitting and I definitely enjoy when it's Saturday, it's blue and when it's Sunday, it's red. I actually like this way of doing it because it just really reminds me of the 70s and vintage dive watches. I know a lot of people, they don't really like the Cyclops and they would uh, go without the day date complication or just stay with the date, but I have no problem with this whatsoever. A very, very cool detail is here at eight o'clock. You can see you get a sh kind of a shark fin here, which is really, really cool. I really like that Seiko made this 
small, very, very subtle detail to the dial. The dial being the star of this watch, you can actually also find a detail you won't just see at first glance. A really nice thing as well is that you get a ceramic bezel insert, you get a sapphire crystal which is completely flat. On the other turtles it's actually the Hardlex mineral crystal so this is a big upgrade for Seiko with this king turtle that you get sapphire crystal and it actually responds really well to both natural and artificial lighting situations so I believe it's treated with AR coating but I'm not sure. The bezel insert, as I said, is ceramic, which is a big, big upgrade as well because it's very scratch resistant and it just gives the right shine and glow to the dial. With a matte aluminium bezel insert, you wouldn't get the same kind of shine and finesse in my opinion. So on the bezel insert, you also get a loom pip at 12 o'clock and then you of course get the 60 minute, minute counter as we know from dive watches. And I must say the bezel action on this watch is an absolute joy. The tactile feeling of turning this bezel and also the sound is just such an enjoyment. I'm actually, I know it's a bit of a nerdy move, but I really, really just enjoy playing with the bezel on this watch. It is a 120 click unidirectional bezel with absolutely no play. It just feels so nice. It's so, it has the right resistance, but it's also very smooth and gliding. It is just, it just feels extremely professional. I would say this is almost up towards Rolex and Tudor quality with the tactile feeling of the bezel. Having a look at the case, it is this cushion shaped case as we saw just a few minutes ago. High polish to the sides, unsigned screw down crown here at 4 o'clock which is very very easy to operate. It's very easy to wind and set this watch and it feels very secure. It's, it just really finds the right glide into getting screwed down when you're finished setting the time or winding the watch. This movement, the 4R36, does have manually winding and hacking, as all modern movements should have. And then you get this very nice brushing here on the top on the locks, which are very short because of this cushion case shape. The case back, as you can see here with the Sega Wave, it's a screw down case back, all the different information, sapphire crystal, 200 meters of water resistance and all of that. Not very interesting, but cool nonetheless. The strap is this very nice, very, very soft and very thick silicone rubber strap. It's definitely the best strap I have tried on a Sega watch below 1000 US dollars. It's very soft. It feels very secure. You get this brushed pin buckle with Seiko and then you get this brushed keeper in metal and of course also the wave here. Looking at the watch and profile again you can see we get this very nice almost kind of hand grenade etching to the bezel which is very very easy to grip. They definitely also upgraded that part of the watch. Another thing that is really really amazing with this watch and why I really love it is that everything aligns. And that's not a sure thing when you buy a Seiko these days that the Rehort the hour markings and the bezel insert markings actually line up perfectly. They do with this one and I'm so happy about it. That's actually kind of a party killer for me if everything is unaligned, misaligned, but it isn't on this watch, which is a really big joy for me. Also, I really enjoy how accurate this movement is. So they actually state very bad tolerances upwards towards 45 seconds off, but I get a Average of approximately plus six seconds, which is absolutely amazing for this 4R36 movement. So now you can see it on my wrist, and as you can see, it is a big, chunky, noticeable watch on my 18 centimeter wrist. But it is actually a watch that has the ability to really, really give you a lot of beautiful dial, but still not being too big on the wrist, although it is a 45 millimeter diameter watch, which I really, really think is a super cool thing. This is actually kind of the perfect combination because you get a lot of dial and with this beautiful dial with the blue sunburst wave patterns and these beautiful cream colored hour markings filled with loom, I really just want a lot of dial to enjoy. So all in all, I'm just a huge fan of this watch. I will say that you should not pay more than maybe maximum of 540 US dollars. It is not the best movement. It is kind of a standard Seiko movement. This particular example is very accurate, 
but don't pay too high a price for this watch. This, I believe, is a keeper in my collection. It is kind of a polarizing watch because it's very big, it's very bright, so it is not a everyday situation watch, which is of course the biggest kind of problem with this watch. I of course knew this fact when I bought the watch because this is meant as a diver summer weekend hot evenings watch, which is perfect for those occasions, but it is definitely not a go to the office watch or if you're wearing a shirt or something like that. A thing is that this silicon rubber strap is also a magnet to dust, which just makes you have to actually wash this rubber strap from time to time because it, it can get really, really dirty looking at the rubber strap. And my last thing is that I would definitely swap out this metal keeper which is just too much in my opinion for such a big watch with a rubber keeper. All in all, I'm a big, big fan of this new Seiko King Turtle SRPE 07K1 watch. If you enjoyed this review, don't forget to leave a comment down below. Which of the three new models is your favorite and do you think this is a value proposition at the prices you can find online compared to the older turtle versions and other Seiko dive watches below $1,000. Also, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also, you should definitely click in on my website wristwatchpassion.net to read more articles. I will leave a link down in the description. Also, remember to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and don't forget to share this video on the forums with friends and other watch nerds.